Now in this exercise today, what we're going to be doing is first connecting to an existing AF database, that, that solution one I just showed you. We're going to select an element called device status, and we're going to be making use of different types of triggers to create a notification. So we'll use, utilize the AND condition. We're going to use the comparison, uh, the comparison type of trigger. We're going to use a performance equation syntax. We're going to do all those things, and I'll describe more of that in just a second. We'll check in the changes, start the notification, and then take a look at the results. So essentially, this is a note. This is a lab uh, that really tries to teach what the different triggers are, what triggers are available in Pi notifications. Now, the the triggers consist of a condition and a target. The target we're going to use for this is going to be an element that already exists. You're not going to have to create it. It's an element that has several attributes. So in this case, we're going to be looking sometimes at multiple attributes. So for example, we're going to use the logical AND to join a couple of different comparisons. This would be comparing two different attributes within that element to check to see what their status uh, their statuses are and then trigger appropriately. We'll also make use of a performance equation uh, type notification. So the trigger is going to be based on performance equation syntax. Now we won't demonstrate this, but there is another. That's the SQC uh, type of uh, trigger, statistical quality control. Now before we get into some details on what these different conditions are, I do want to remind you that all of the elements in AF can have attributes that are either PI or non-PI data. So this data doesn't necessarily have to be coming from PI. It could be coming from a relational database or a web service or something like that. So let's take a look at these different notification types, the different types of things we can trigger on. Well, as you can see, we can simply create a trigger based on some uh, easy comparison. So temperature in this case would be the element that we're comparing it to. That's the target. We're just looking at temperature greater than 150. Very simple comparison. Now in addition, we can do comparisons that are more complex, like for example the statistical quality control comparisons. The SQC comparisons, if you're not familiar with them, there's a whole set of standards. Uh, this set here, the the ones that Western Electric originally came up with, now the AT&T standards. Uh, you can choose all or none and then control what um, what is going to trigger those. For example, the, the standard uh, outside control trigger, the three standard de deviations, we can say if one out of one readings is outside three standard deviations, then we'll trigger. But you could easily say, well, if one out of two or two out of three or something like that. So we've got some nice flexibility on SQC. If you're familiar with our SQC packages, you'll see we support the same types of triggers. Now next up, we can use our performance equation syntax. Performance, performance equation syntax is, uh, well, if you've been around Pi for a while, you may recognize functions like this, tag max. Tag max is a PE, or performance equation, function. You'll see these functions are things that you won't necessarily find in other places. For example, you won't find these in Excel or Visual Basic or something like that. Tag max is simply going to take the name of a pi tag and determine what the maximum is between this start time that you see right here and the end time that you see right here. So that's an example of something, a function that would be useful for somebody in engineering. So we have a whole suite of performance equation functions that you can make use of within notifications. Now if you are interested in more information about these functions, what I'd suggest you do is, and you can do this on the Learning Lab image, if you go into Program Files, PyPC, Help. Under this particular directory, what you'll find is a lot of the help files that are associated with Py. And there's one right here called PE Reference. This is where you'll find more information about all of these different built-in functions. As you can see, there are lots of these different built-in functions. Now, the next trigger type would be using a logical AND, and then we also support logical OR. Uh, basically, it's taking multiple uh, simple comparisons like these comparisons and either anding or oring them together. 
Now you'll find in the exercise, the documentation describes an approach that you can use to solve this, this exercise. And in that approach, you'll find all the different steps that are required and the different things that are specified in the exercise so that if you wanted to challenge yourself, you could just use the approach and see if you can do this without going through the step-by-step -step instructions. So give that a try first. If you can't uh, do it using the step-by-step, -step excuse me, using just the approach, as you can see, there is a step-by-step -step solution you can find. And that's what I'm going to go through right now. So I'll start by going into my online learning lab uh, virtual machine here. And I'm going to start by opening up this database called, uh, it's called Solution Underscore Notifications Learning Lab Database. Now, we want you to use this instead of, um, instead of any that you may have created in previous exercises, simply because in the elements, you will find something called device status that we've already set up for you. So we're going to start with that. And again, you do that by choosing database and then just choose the solution database. So let's go into the notification section. I'll create a brand new notification. Now you'll see this is the same database that contains the solution, but I'm just going to create a new one, a brand new notification. And this notification is going to be called simply status notification. Now as before, uh, after you specify you know, the name and any description that you want, uh, the next thing to get to is this trigger tab. Within the trigger tab, first thing to do is to select the target. In other words, what it is, what is it you're going to be monitoring here? So by selecting it, or when I choose select a target, this will give me a little tree structure that I can use to look through the different elements in my set of notification, or in my set of uh, elements within AF. Now in our previous exercise, we used that. This time we're going to use this called device status. Now let me show you device status just briefly. I'll go ahead and check in my work. That essentially saves it. If I go into the elements section of AF, you see in device status, it's an element that has these five attributes. Uh, device on is simply an on-off trip uh, toggle there. Level for measuring level, temperature, oops, and then a calculated temperature and adjusted temperature. So it's a nice handy little thing that we can use as a trigger for the things that we're going to be doing in this particular exercise. We're coming up with multiple triggers here. So let's go back here and I'll click on status notification. And as you saw, we just selected that as a target. Now in this exercise, we have multiple conditions we want to add here instead of just the simple condition we did before. Uh, if you take a look in the approach, you'll see what those conditions are. First of all, we want to check to see is the device not on. If the device is not on, we simply want to send an email saying, hey, we, we're shut down now. Now also, we're looking for these two conditions. If the level is greater than 90 and the temperature is greater than 250, well, that's something we want to bring to people's attention. So that's another situation where we send an email. And then finally, uh, we're going to do a, a, a last criteria. If the average of the temperature in the last one hour is greater than or equal to 300, then we're going to send an email there as well. That should be send email. So those are our conditions. So we're going to set this up over here by first adding that first simplest condition. Is this, in fact, on or not? So under condition here, I can either, well, I can go ahead and choose new condition. And the, um, the new condition we want to choose here is going to be a comparison. For the input, I'm going to go out and find the attribute that tells me whether this is in fact on or off. In this case, under device status, which is my target, uh, we've listed the attributes. Here's the attribute we want, device on off. That's going to toggle between on and off. We're looking for the not equals here. Here's our not equals operator. And we're going to compare that to on. Is this on? So if it's not equal to on, then it's off. Um, now some of the other things you'd want to specify here, uh, we're, we're not going to change the time true. In other words, we want this to trigger immediately. So we'll leave that at zero uh, for the time true options. We'll leave that at clock. 
Now for the state, uh, what, we're, what we're interested in here is indicating that this has now been shut down. Now this is a state that already exists here. If it didn't exist, I would click on this, create a new state, and then just type in shutdown. And as for the priority, we'll just consider this a normal priority. So there we go. We've got a notification, and um, this should, this has the one trigger. We will be notified if there is a shutdown.